This conference will now be recorded. I am Mayor Potter of Heber City, and I am so thrilled to be here to share with you the state of Heber City in 2021. Thank you so much to all of the citizens here who care about our city and are working hard to make a difference. We're going to start with a short video, giving you a little bit of a picture of what we're facing here in Heber City. Well, today I want to take a little step back in history and talk about how Heber was discovered. We've all heard the old adage about those who don't learn from history are bound to repeat it. And there are so many stories from history that we can benefit from. But today I want to share a story from some of the earliest settlers of our valley and talk about how our valley was discovered, rediscovered, and then discovered again and again. Often we hear chatter on social media about the locals versus the move-ins. And I want to introduce to you today the original local, and his name was Chief Tabby. He was one of the um, Native Americans who lived here originally, like most of the places in Utah, and he was a part of the Timpanogos Hutes tribe. Well, he, they were here for a long time before 1857 when some workers who were in the Big Cottonwood Canyon hiked up to the summit and looked down into our valley. Our valley had, the reputation was out that there was a paradise land up here in the Hebrew Valley. These workers confirmed the report and the news was out. In the spring of 1858, after hearing these reports, a group of cattlemen decided to leave Provo and drive their herds up the canyon and establish ranches in the south end of our valley, while others explored the area looking for options to settle here. There was a pioneer party that consisted primarily of LDS converts from Great Britain. They arrived here in the spring of 1859. They camped about a mile north of our present Heber Valley, Heber City, I should say, and christened the town site and named it London. In 1862, our county was created by the territorial legislature, and at that time, the London town site was named Heber City. A few years later, a chief named Black Hawk led an uprising because of the Congressional Act that forced the Ute tribes of Sam Pete and Sevier counties into reservations. Black Hawk retaliated against the settlers for broken promises, mistreatment, personal humiliation, and other acts that injured or killed Utes in the constant interactions between the early settlers and the natives since about 1849. The Black Hawk War was a three-part war and involved members of several different 
Ute tribes, Southern Paiutes, the Apaches, and the Navajos. Well, Brigham Young was concerned for his people, and he ordered the families throughout the valley to ford up in the central settlements of Heber, Midway, and Wallsburg. Like Brigham Young, Joseph Stacy Murdoch, who was one of the first move-ins, was the presiding bishop in Heber. He believed it was better to feed the natives than to fight them. So in August of 1867, Murdoch invited the Chief Tabby and his people to come and have a conversation. Chief Tabby was wise, he was well-educated, and he was always committed to serving the best interest of his people. So they all came together and he only wanted to talk to old Murdoch. So they rode down to Heber with the sub-chiefs and the several hundred braves and their women and children, and they camped out in Murdoch's yard and pasture. A feast was held the next day with enough meat and baked bread and corn and whatever else the townsfolk had to offer to feed everyone. The two spoke all day long. Later, Murdoch and Chief Tabby exchanged, exchanged simple gifts. They smoked a peace pipe and had a tr signed a treaty of friendship. They ended the war between the settlers of Heber Valley and the Utes. And with their signatures, the war was over in our valley. Joseph and Tabby served their people well. They honored their vows to maintain peace and they remained friends for life. They were leaders who had drastically different opinions and agendas, but they demonstrated their commitment to seeking understanding and finding compromise rather than fighting. Well, Chief Tabby and Joseph Murdoch would hardly recognize Heber City today. Let's talk about Heber City by the numbers. Our population has grown from 11,362 in 2010 to approximately 18,640 in 2020. Um, we'll get our census numbers later this year and confirm that, but that's about a 4.36% annual growth. That's pretty significant. Um, we, our size of our city was 5,753 acres in 2019. We increased with an annexation of 8,000 acres in 2020. That leaves us currently at 21.5 square miles with four proposed annexations that are currently being discussed. We have um, 107 full-time equivalent city employees and a budget of $31 million in our general fund for the um, current fiscal year. As for property tax, we have a $1.65 million in property tax, um, up from 1.57 last year. And sales tax is up to 4.64 from 3.98. Just as an aside, during COVID, there was only one month where our sales tax dropped from the previous year. We feel very fortunate. That's not the case for most cities. And that shows the strength of our economy and the diversity that we continue to have such great sales tax numbers. However, we did have a lot of challenges in 2020 and the one that we all, oh, I keep, let me just say one thing on this um, property tax dollar. Those who live in Heber City, every dollar of their property tax is divided among several different government entities. And you can see by this slide and by looking on your property tax, what percentage goes to Heber City and that's 8.56%. So, um, with those and our sales tax and fees and revenues, that's how we keep our city going. And um, you can look closer at that at your own property tax just to see where your money's going. So um, often difficult roads lead to beautiful destinations. And we have found that as a city as we deal with many challenges, but we are finding the silver lining in some of the things that we are facing. So tonight I just wanna share with you a few of those challenges that have been most significant to us. Um, COVID, of course, um, kind of threw us all for a loop in 2020. Our city required new processes and procedures, and we moved all of our city council and other meetings online. Our staff has been incredible. They've adapted and they continue to not only adapt and do the minimum, but they take every opportunity to not only survive, but to thrive in this new digital world. Um, we have done well at this. We've been able to have flexibility for our employees. We have found more efficient ways of doing things. Some of these things save people trips to City Hall. Some of them save employees trips to City Hall. And I believe over time we will see a lot of cost savings from these efforts um, due to COVID, despite the challenge that it has been. Let's talk about cost of living. 
Anyone who's looked at the real estate market in our valley can tell you that we are facing a tremendous challenge with affordable housing. Um, not just Heber, but all of Utah is seeing this, these challenges and we see legislation coming from the state to try and help or hurt depending on your views. Um, think about it this way, most of us over I don't know, 40 probably, bought homes that were two or three times our annual salary. Um, I was working for Governor Levitt in the 90s and I bought a condo. I was probably making in the high 20s, not quite 30,000 and bought a condo that was $60,000. Then when we sold it, it went up to 90,000. Well, that's just not the case anymore. If you think about a starting teacher in our valley makes about 40,000, a starting police makes about 40,000 and, and all the other, um, other professions that are in about that range. Well, I checked on the MLS today and there were two active listings under 600,000, both at or above 550. Um, so do the math there. Um, I've spoken with the builders of the sawmill development on the south end of town that when I voted for it on council was supposed to provide housing in the 300s. Now they aren't anticipating any homes under $500,000. This is a significant challenge as housing prices continue to increase faster than salaries. We have to consider what happens in the future when our workforce can't afford to live here. And we as a city are, are facing this and trying to do everything that we can do to prepare for that and, do, and, and come up with a plan that's acceptable to the citizens and to the elected officials of our Valley. Um, growth is the next challenge, which really is the driving force behind many of our challenges. There's so much, so much growth pressure on our city. There's many new residents from many different places. There is a lot of demand from people who want to be here. There are people wanting to invest here, invest in business and real estate. We have growing families, people whose children are getting older and want to find a place to live here. And I meet people from all over this state and country moving here, wanting to move here, and the demand continues. People have discovered our valley, our paradise land, and, um, and we're seeing the results of that. Many people are saying, why can't you stop the growth? Our city's growing too fast. There are several variables that determine how fast a city grows and supply and demand being on top of that. When a property owner meets the requirements of the code and they go through the process, as a city, we can't say, well, you have to wait. We feel like we've had enough growth this year. There are bills every legislative session to take land use authority and oversight away from the cities to oversee their developments. During our most recent legislative session, there was a bill that would allow developers to hire their own inspectors instead of going through the city inspector. This bill was amended and changed, but ultimately there are time limits for different steps in the process that cities have to follow. And every time that doesn't happen, we hear about it and, it and sometimes new bills come from the legislature threatening to take away our ability to do these things. We believe that the, and, and surveys show that people trust their local government the most. So we wanna keep these decisions at the local level. Traffic, um, with more people, we have more cars. We need to keep things moving. We wanna keep things moving but we may have to revise our expectations. We have limited resources. We have competing interests of services and things that people want in this community. And these will be ongoing conversations about how we deal with traffic in our city. As a city facing big challenges, we have followed the wise advice of Stephen Covey. The best way to predict your future is to create it. Our city has come up with many plans. These are our, our solutions to these problems are not reactive, we're not waiting for things to happen to us, but we are being proactive and planning for the future. We have done so much planning in the last few years and particularly in um, 2020, some of these plans came to completion and were adopted. Envision Heber 2050 is one that I think most of the residents of our city have heard about. And we did receive an award for this from the Utah chapter of the American Planning Association. It was a high achievement award demonstrating the thought and the um, input from the public and the kind of plan that this is will create a, a remarkable city, which is our vision. We have been accused of ignoring the principles of Envision Heber as we consider a new zone on the north end of town. If this were unentitled land, we'd be having a totally different conversation. 
but the principles of Envision Heber are incorporated into the North Village Zone. Cluster development, more open space, dark sky requirements, parks and trails. There's even a requirement for developers to donate a preservation fee that the city hopes will go toward preserving the North Fields that we all love. This is the first effort of this kind in this valley to try and get something like this from development to help us preserve the thing that makes us our valley beautiful and makes it feel rural. We also completed this year a parks and cemetery plan. This was the first time for Heber where we have a plan that talks about what we want to do in the future with our existing parks and the kind of parks that we will require and the amenities in future development. We've talked about our cemetery. How will it grow? There was talk at one point of selling some of that property. Um, the council has decided against that, but now we have a plan for how our cemetery will grow as it moves into the future. And trails. We adopted the master trail plan for the county. Um, there, this plan connects all trails throughout the valley. And we are further planning trails within our own developments in our city. We are participating in paying for a countywide trail planner whose position is to ensure that developers meet trail standards and that all the government entities are working together to complete these planned trails. We have heard the requests and, and the comments that people want more parks and trails as amenities that truly improve our quality of life and ability to get outside and enjoy the beautiful valley that we live in. We also are looking to complete a master plan for the airport. We are currently in the process. It's been stalled a bit because of COVID, but on April 1st, we will have our next public hearing. Um, the, there will be a forecast, and this is the prediction and the projection of what the future operations will be at the airport. This will be approved by the FAA after the April 1st open house, and that forecast will be available two weeks before the open house for all the public to view and bring your comments and thoughts to the open house. We're also in the middle of a bypass environmental impact study. UDOT, um, this is their process that they do to look at all the factors when they're looking of where a new road should go. We're looking at, they're looking at environmental factors, they're looking at traffic counts, they're looking at social impact. And in a year or so, we'll have a recommendation. You can always find updates on that at hebervalleyeis.udot.utah.gov. And the other one is this North Village Zone. We, um, this is a zone that will govern um, north of our existing boundaries of Heber City. Um, there are possible annexations in that area north of Coyote Lane. The city council and staff have been studying and working on this zone for over a year now. We've had four public hearings and there's been a great deal of comments and input on, on this zone that will give developers an idea of what the city wants in that area. And then developers who are looking to annex can come with proposals where the council will have to approve a master development agreement and determine individually if each of these annexations are good for Heber City. One of the big things that we've been doing is uh, citizen outreach and input. As we plan and prepare, we continue to reach out to the public and work hard to bring more information from the city to the residents. One of the new programs that we're starting is a leadership program where citizens can come and learn more about what really happens in the city, take a deep dive into what happens in our police department and in our public works department and try to really understand how our city functions. And we anticipate starting that this fall and we will share more information as it becomes available. Um, we also continue to read emails that come to council and uh, we take phone calls. Um, I meet with people. Um, we're, we're always open to hearing from the residents of this valley. And the more educated you are, the more, um, the better information that you can bring back to us as a city so that we will be able to be responsive to the desires of the residents. Um, in conclusion, in following the earliest Heber examples set by our original local and move in, Chief Tabby and Bishop Murdoch, we must continue to welcome newcomers, find common ground in our shared humanity and deep love of Heber Valley, work through our differences to coexist in peace and prosperity. Thank you so much for being here.